Hey guys and girls, welcome to today's video blog. Nightwise is, as usual, um, in the car, eyes on the road, hands on the steering wheel, and my mind on the edge of real and cyberspace. I uh, wanted to talk to you guys about uh, default apps versus third-party apps. Um, I do a lot on my digital devices, you know, a lot of content creation and... Um, you know, from time to time, I end up looking for, you know, an app that does X, Y, Z. And the question that I've been asking myself lately is, what's best? Is it best if you're looking for something to do on your machine that you use the default apps that come with your operating system or your platform? Or do you go looking out for a myriad of uh, third-party apps to find out what you're doing? So I kind of tried both. And both of them have uh, pretty good um, pros and cons. So to kind of put that into a practical example, because now I'm just you know floating around etherically, um, let's say a video recording app like this one. So I video blog in the car, um, which is nice because you know I can still keep my eyes on the road and, and talk to you guys. And for that, I need a camera recorder camcorder app. Good. There are two things, two things that I can do on my, for example, my iPhone or my iOS device or on, on my Android device, whatever, is to A, um, look for the default app and B, hit the app store and go looking for whatever uh, is out there that does it. So let's say that you are going to do, you know, video blogging. Um, hit the app store and enter video blogging. You know, back in the day, you only had five or six apps that would do what you wanted to do. And if you still use the Microsoft Store, you probably still have only five or six apps to do what you want to do. But the but these days, the app stores are filled with a gazillion number of apps, you know. And hitting video blogging or camera recording or video recording is going to give you this slew of applications sorted by whatever algorithm the uh, store that you're using prefers to use and you need to make a choice. Now, I found this to be uh, very interesting when it comes down to a specific functionality. You know, you're looking for something specific. I want a video app that, that can, you know, put a little logo in there or I want a video recording app that uh, that allows me to, to record in a different format or do XYZ. If you have a specific um, question that the uh, requirement that the app should do, it's great to start looking out there. The only downside is you got to hit Google first, enter your requirements and hope that you find the name of the app you're looking for, then go to the store, look for it and, and see if it works. If you don't, you just end up, you know, punching five, six apps downloading them and trying them out one by one. Man, this one doesn't work. This one has bloatware on it. This one doesn't do anything. This one uh, comes with ads. This one is, is just basically uh, an in-app payment stuff. This is crap. This kind of works. But, you know, how do you make that choice? You can either experiment, which takes up a lot of time. Um, you can read the user reviews, which, which aren't always reliable. And um, you can see the number of downloads of such an app, you know, how much how many times it has been downloaded. That's one way. Um, it takes a lot of time. And I found it to be frustrating at times not finding what I wanted to do. Then there's the default apps. The default apps on your OS, like for example, iOS or Android or God knows what, are boring as hell. You know, everybody has them. Everybody has them. You know, you have them, your aunt has them, your grandma has them. Your grandma's grandma's has them, you know, probably not, but you know, you never know. You know, everybody uses these apps. There's nothing exciting about it. They're normally just, they just kind of have the features that you want, but that's it. But the great thing is they are mostly very well made and produced into and, and integrated into the operating system. For example, for video blogging, I just use the camera app and it just works. It is quite painful to 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 think about this but it does just work downside is of course that some of the fancy requirements that you want are not there these are basic apps um, also it's it's not very hot and trendy and geeky because you know as I said 
your aunt has them, your grandma has them, your grandma's grandma has them. But they do um, integrate well and are mostly better for your battery life. I found this out by using third-party apps to do my mail and my contacts versus using the um, native apps uh, on, on, on some of the uh, operating systems and finding out that they were actually faster and better integrated with the OS and had better battery life. So here's my question for you today. What do you use? Do you prefer to use the default apps of your um, platform or do you go looking out for third-party apps? Do you check your mail and your contacts and your calendars using the default app on iOS or Android or are you somebody that uses these um, exotic applications? Let me know in the comments. I'll be, I'm, I'm very curious. Very, very curious. So not only tell me what do you use, but also tell me why. See you guys tomorrow.